audit output has been paid for by the WZWA Network. Hello everyone and welcome to the WZWA Network and welcome to my review show here of NWA 75 Night 1 on August 26, 2023 from the Chase Park Plaza Hotel in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm your host, Carl Fournier. Great to be with you all once again. Sorry I'm doing this review quite late now. It's now 1.30 in the morning, so uh, there's people in my house that are sleeping, so I have to talk a little bit more quiet than usual. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> so, look, bro. Two years ago, NWA 73 was our first official pay-per-view review outside of the old Four Horsemen podcast that we used to do where everyone from the network would give their thoughts on pay-per-views back in the day. So this is kind of like the two-year anniversary almost of uh, reviews for uh, pay-per-views here on the WCWA network. Uh, so great to have your attention here, right here, right now. Danny Deals joins Joe and Velvet on Commentary Man. Velvet, she was looking hot, bro. Good on your luck. Okay, let's let's crack on with the pre-show here. Uh, Magic Jake Dumas takes on Robert Anthony uh, in a match that goes five minutes and 40 seconds. Um, <clears throat> CJ was not at ringside, which was very disappointing. She was out there in the gauntlet later, but not here for the match with Magic Jake Dumas. Uh, Magic Jake seems to be having a hard time progressing up the car because I believe, you know, he's been pretty much opening match on pre-shows for... Since end of way 73 almost. Um, some technical sorry, tef technical, technical difficulties take place here on the pre-show. Um this match, for whatever reason, as I was watching it on YouTube, it just stopped. <laughs> Nothing was happening. It was a, a still shot of them two wrestling and there was no audio and it was all screwed up. So uh, nothing. My, nothing. I don't. I can't really comment on this match. Um, apparently, Robert beat Dumas. So, who cares? Let's just move forward. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so after this, there was no more technical difficulties. M ninety five. My friends, Maddie, and of course, Mister Kate. Uh, you can check out my exclusive interview with them on the Inside Insiders Edge podcast on this channel. Excuse me for um, stammering over my words, but. I've got cotton mouth. Let's crack on with this. Mr. Kate and Maddie, great interview, talking about their title defense uh, on night two against Pretty Empowered. Um, at the end of the promo, it was a good promo, girls. Um, you know, you two are great. Uh, May Valentine, I don't know where she is. I'm very upset, concerned. Because Mr. Kate said, thanks, new girl. So I'm assuming she's been replaced, which is devastating for me. I like May. I think May's cool. Uh, Camille had an interview. Um, you know what, Camille? <laughs> because I'm such a big fan, like clearly I'm going to give her po positive <laughs> responses every time she does anything. But she's really got good with her promos. And I was very impressed with the interview backstage. Let's move forward. Daisy Kill and Talos, or Talos, whatever. They take on the fixes. Um, whoever wins this match takes on the uh, NWA United States Tag Team Champions on night two in a match that goes seven minutes and 14 seconds. I was wondering, what happened to Hawks RE? What happened to PJ and his dad, Luke? Where are they? Because... I would have thought by this point that they would have at least won these belts. But um, match starts off well. Uh, Ligurski, you know what, bro? You changed up your gear after I saw you wrestle on power this week. And I thought maybe it wasn't such flattering looking gear because your man boobies were kind of like flipping and flopping around. Um, so I liked the uh, kind of updated look that you had here. Um, not that my comments on that show... <laughs> was seen by you. There's no way. I've released it on Patreon, which you can check out. If you just look at like down on our description you can check out our um, Patreon and every week for the next few weeks, you're going to get free reviews of me um, reviewing NWA Power, Impact Wrestling uh, and a whole bunch of other, NXT, a whole bunch of other things. But, you know, 
in a few weeks it will be behind a paywall if you want to keep up to date on my thoughts on those shows um <clears throat> the fixes dominate early bradley hit a great dive to the outside like a suicide dive he's a big boy he's a big bastard and he hit a dive to the outside fixes with the extended heat excuse me uh, excuse me what went down the wrong hole <laughs> uh there was a fan in attendance that kept on saying that's right stay on him stay on him it's kept doing it over and over again bro shut up uh talos you know what he's a big bastard he's a big fucking Rainu. uh that big son of a bitch He's got to invest in better gear, though. Let's be honest. I thought that his pants did not match. He got, bro, invest in what you're doing. If this is what you want to do, you're going for it. You're going balls to the wall. Then invest in yourself. Get you some, get you some better gear, mate. Uh, a fixer sandwich, man. That what a what a great name for a finishing move. Uh, Ligurski gets choke slammed, and uh, Talos and Daisy Kill get the victory. Uh, and then after the match, the country gentlemen come out, the US tag champs, and they stare down their new challengers, uh, Talos and Daisy Kill. Sorry, I had to pause again to make sure I got all my coughing out of my system. Um, let's move forward. Jim Mitchell, sinister minister, backstage with an interview. Man, this guy still, he's, he still gets it. At this age he's at now, he still looks the same as he did in ECW. This guy's the verbiage, what he had to say. It's not cookie cutter bullshit like you see in WWE or AEW or sometimes Impact Wrestling, NXT, etc. This guy gets a little bit of creative license to say what he wants to say because he is so good at what he does. If I owned WWE, I would hire him. I don't care how old he is. I would hire him. Um, soon after his interview, Poya Del Mar joins uh, and kind of like continues the story with her and uh, Silas Mason. And hopefully love conquers all. But we will see what happens when that takes place later on. Uh, next matchup on the pre-show, Jordan Clearwater takes on Zion. Not Zion, Zion. With Austin Idol at ringside, six minutes, 49 seconds. So I guess Zion... I don't know what's going look i only just started watching power this week okay so i'm going to be watching it every week from here on and we'll see like how my reviews go for the pay-per-views um when i have the context of what's been going on between these pay-per-views because let's be honest nwa don't put on a pay-per-view once a month it's a little bit longer than that between you know uh pay-per-views so uh if I watch every week, then I'm going to have that context. Um, so we'll see what's going to happen with Sion and Zion in the future. Um, I did pop for Joe Galley talking about the fact that Austin Idol had a cane with him at ringside and mentioned that this is what he stirs his Metamucil with every morning. Great, great work, bro. Um, so this is the evil version of Sion. It's Zion. So he's not a Southpaw like Sion. Um, I always wondered... As I was watching the match, you know, uh, Zion was getting his head slammed into a turnbuckle. And I'm like, why would that hurt? It's padding. <laughs> uh, Jordan Clearwater hit a rude awakening. I don't have many notes here. Um, but Clearwater had a cane broke over his back. And then Zion picks up the win with the Anaconda Vice. I can't remember what they called it. I should have written it down, but instead I wrote Anaconda Vice. Let's move forward. Vampiro with an interview backstage. Good promo for somebody that apparently has dementia. Dude, I watched you. I've said it before. I've, I watched his documentary that he had come out not, not long ago, and he was talking about how he had dementia or or Alzheimer's and all that. And he's wrestling on AAA this year, uh, Triple Mania. He's as a manager here, cutting promos and doesn't seem to have any problems. Like, bro, like I know that there's this reputation that Vampiro has that he kind of talks a little bit of BS sometimes, but don't BS about dementia, dude. Come on. Anyway. Um, let's move forward. Final match here on the pre-show. Uh, it's a it's one of these scramble matches. Alex Taylor with Danny Deals takes on Jack Cartwheel, Matt Vine, Eric Jackson, and Koa Laksamana with Kalise at ringside. Um, I'm getting sick of seeing Jack Cartwheel, but by the end of this match, I changed my tune a little bit on him. And I thought to myself, hello, Kalise. Mm. Mm -mm. damn she's cute 
Um, so uh, I, I like that um, Poa came out with the, um, you know, this kind of ceremony of, you know what? You know, hang on. He came out with the ceremonial flowers, and I'll wear that right here, right now, until the end of the review. I thought that was really cool. He had a whole heap of them. Kalise helped him um, show them off and 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 give them to the fans at ringside. So you know what? It's like Brett the Hitman Hart with his fucking sunglasses. Well done, mate. You thought about things. Very good. Um, so uh, Jack Hartwell comes out with his stupid cowboy hat, and I'm like, who's this guy? Who is got? Who is this guy? He, I've seen him twice on AAA and I just really didn't like his stuff. But I think because it was a AAA style match, that's why I didn't like what he was doing because I don't think the match was laid out very well there. Here, though, he was put in a spot where he, I don't know, he looked good out there. I, I don't know who agented this match, but like it, when he shined, it didn't annoy me. Whereas in AAA, when he shined, it did annoy me. Like getting tornado DDT'd by a rubber fucking lizard. Oh, come on, man. Uh, anyway, um, at one stage, Khalees gets grabbed uh, by one of the guys and Joe Galley screaming, get your hands off that woman. Uh, but Khalees, uh, as she was grabbed, she slapped the guy. I can't remember which guy it was. I th I think it was, I think it was Matt Vine. I don't, I'm not sure. Anyway, um, she slapped him. That slap was shit. Hit them. They won't care. It won't hurt. Trust me. Hit them as hard as you can. Um, Jack does a dive. The crowd popped for it. You know what I'm like with dives. Eric Jackson took too long at one stage to jump off the top rope onto two guys. Way too long, bro. Come on, man. I bet you knew it as it was happening that it was taking too long. They were just standing there for... Just to... These are the things that take the suspense, you know, the suspension, sorry, of disbelief out of it when it's just a couple of seconds, but it, it can ruin everything. Um, Alex Taylor hit a fisherman neck breaker, which was a bit rough looking, but then there was a shooting star press later on by Jack Cartwheel, um, and he won the damn match. And you know what? After his performance here, I kind of dislike him less than I did before. Uh, but then again, maybe um, being, uh, you know, wrestling on a AAA show, maybe the, the style of the matches that he was in, those multi-man matches that he was in, maybe that kind of offended me a little bit because I'm clearly a fan that um, prefers an older style of pro wrestling. Let's move forward into the actual pay-per-view. Damn. I can't believe I had so much to talk about in the pre-show. I've already gone 17 minutes or 15 minutes or so. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, NWA Women's Television Championship. Uh, Kinsey Page takes on Max the Impale with Sinister Minister at ringside and a match that goes six minutes and 40 seconds. Ker Kenzie has really, really impressed me, dude. Honestly, uh, since I first saw her, you know, uh, teaming with Ella Envy, uh, they were my women's tag team of 2022. So I've seen her grow since then. She's become a singles wrestler. Now she's been the NWA Women's Television Champion for some time since they introduced the belt. And I think she's done a great job. Um, I really like her attitude. Her character work is fantastic. And Mackenzie, I don't know if you're ever going to say this. You're probably not, but I really want to interview you for the podcast. Um, I just think that it would be interesting to talk to somebody so early in their career with so much promise ahead of them. Uh, fast forward two, three years, I see her in NXT unless Billy Corgan has the money to keep her around. She slaps the shit out of Max early on, which I laughed at. Um, but you know what? Max the Impaler... Max the Impaler is so solidly built. It's kind of like... When I look at Maxine Paler, I kind of feel like Maxine Paler's uh, built like a Jim Neidhart, like a like a tank, like a big Reno, but instead with wild hair and makeup. I don't know why, or in less hairy as well, because Jim Neidhart, he hairy like animal, but <laughs> I don't know. Maxine Paler's just so such a tank, man. And I just think to myself, you know, you put her against. Oh, I said it. I said her. You put. Max the Impaler against Kenzie. And come on, there's no way Kenzie can beat Max the Impaler. Max the Impaler is a tank. Okay. Uh, 
another random thought. I wonder if Velvet Sky would ever reform the beautiful people for a once-off, because I would have done it for this show to get M95 over. Yes, it would might have taken a spot for Pretty Empowered. You might have been able to make it a three-way tag match, but as long as M95 beat one of the members of um, uh, the beautiful people, then that will get them over as a tag team because they've just beaten someone or a team that is an established team, you know. So uh, Impact Wrestling, NWA, they're doing the best that they can with uh, women's tag team wrestling. But I, I I think there needs to be more teams on both sides of the fence because we've been watching this pretty empowered M95 thing for a while, which is, you know, what makes sense for it to culminate at this show. But anyway, I did not know that there was a 605 time limit for the uh, television title. I think that's really cool. Uh, let's keep going. Um, Kenzie kicked out of, of something that you would have thought she wouldn't have kicked out. And I thought, is she turning babyface? Because throughout this match, it feels like she's being a babyface. Because you've got Max the Impaler, who's totally a heel. Um, but I thought to myself, if Max the Impaler loses this, this is like Omos, right? Omos had opportunities with Strowman, uh, with um, Bobby Lashley, uh, with Brock Lesnar. He's had these opportunities and he's failed when it really mattered. And I don't think it's a good thing for a character like that, just like Max the Impaler last year lost to Camille on Impact Wrestling, lost to, I can't remember who it was. Was it, was it, was it, um, the Russian chick, what's her name? Doesn't matter, but she, she lost that match, you know? Um, so I, I feel like she needed to win this. I said she again, I'm sorry. So I've done so well, I've been so careful. She's non-binary. I'm aware of that. My bad. Uh, Max, uh, yeah, again, needs to win this match. Kenzie Cutter was a nice near fall. I thought this match had been great, but what a finish when Max the Impaler went for a clothesline, but then just fucking nailed her. Nailed Kenzie with a left uh, lariat, left arm lariat and beat her and won the NWA Women's World Television Championship. Congratulations, Max the Impaler. Very cool. Um, after this, the commentators were standing up talking to the camera and I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I know I keep going on about stuff like this, but Jesus, Velvet Sky is so gorgeous, man. I don't know how anyone can stand there and have a conversation with her without like having a mental breakdown. <laughs> uh, coming up next, three-way match for the NWA National Championship. Thrill Billy with Poya Del Mar takes on J.R. Kratos and Odinson in a match that goes nine minutes and 14 seconds. Uh, it was hard to pick who would win this, but from the outset, I was going with Silas. Um, I thought this would be good, and it was three big bastards going at it. Three big balls, mate. Uh, this is a three-way match that I want to see. Spots where all three stay in the ring. Great three-way spots. This reminded me of Chris Benoit versus DDP versus Raven for the US title and pay-per-view in WCW. They stayed in the ring. They kept doing all of this interesting stuff, implementing one another in every spot. Not this same old BS of somebody gets knocked to the outside and they're sitting there looking over the apron waiting for their next spot to come in. No, they went for it. Good stuff. Kratos hit a dive to the outside. It was amazing, dude. Like over the top rope. This guy, this guy does stuff that you would not expect him to do. He is so underrated, J.R. Kratos. Um, I like that... Um, Odinson went, was, was German suplex. He went to the outside, but the commentators did not ignore the fact he was on the outside. They made sure that to let the viewer know that they were aware of it. Um, six sit-out powerbomb by Kratos. Uh, Poyo got in the ring for whatever reason. It really didn't seem like anything prompted Poyo getting in the ring. And I knew Silas was going to lay her out. For his... <laughs> and she got laid out, <laughs> She took a thrill ride and that was hilarious. I don't know why it's funny. I just, I, I, you know what? I love it when there's a heel turn. I love it when heels go over, bro. Uh, Kratos does some more great stuff with a, it was almost like a Pele kick, but um, he got laid out with the belt. He was holding onto the national title that was introduced by Silas Mason. He got an uppercut from Otis and got laid out and he was, he sold it very well. He was just out cold on the apron. But then Silas hit the thrill ride and beat Odinson and won the championship. So I'm glad he won because I think he really has deserved it. 
um, after all the work he's put in over the last year with the NWA. Let's move forward. No disqualification match. Homicide takes on Joe Alonso in a match that goes 10 minutes, two seconds. Um, I thought to myself, Joe screwed here, bro. Joe is screwed. Uh, I'm glad that they're giving him a bit of a push because he's a good little heel, man. Uh, another no DQ match, though. There's several on the show. Uh, Homicide... He ate a dive early in the match and just no sold it and leveled Joe. That was great. Uh, he, and Homicide was in supreme control this whole match. He threw a chair to Joe's skull. The slap of the metal on Joe's head was fantastic. He was crushing with the guardrail. And I popped so much for Joe Galley being like, this is a mugging. This is a mugging. <laughs> Homicide lobs a chair into the ring as Joe is like kind of on all fours and it just cracks him in the back of the skull. <laughs> I love wrestling. I love violence. I love violence. Um, so uh, at one stage of the match, Joe was arguing with a ref. Uh, a, he got hit with the Koji cutter and then Homicide hit a pile driver for Terry Funk. Clearly he was, you know, paying a bit of tribute to him with his tights and hitting the pile driver exactly the way Terry hit it as well. <laughs> uh, and then Homicide started messing, started messing around, which gave Joe the chance to come back. And then somehow Joe Holt held the tights and got the win. And I was like, no way, dude. No way. I, was, I thought he was going to kill him. But they got the young guy over. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's move forward. Not many more to go here, everyone. Uh, the Brothers of Fun Struction with Violent J at ringside from ICP. Look, bro, I, I love ICP. I love ICP. So I was thrilled to see Violent J there. But I still hate the name The Brothers of Fun Struction. It doesn't even rhyme with destruction. Fun structure. Come on, man. Think of something else a bit more clever. They take on Magnum Muscle in a match that goes six minutes, 14 seconds. The brothers of Fun Struction were there, but I was glad to see Violent J, man. I love ICP. I love Violent J. I just wish Shaggy, Shaggy, too dope would be there. Uh, not sure about this one, though. I thought this match did not really belong here. I thought maybe it should have been on the pre show. And maybe something from the pre-show. Let's let's scroll up. What could have gone? Uh, okay, you know what? No, you know what? You should have put the uh, six-man uh, junior heavyweight title number number one contender match here because that only went that only went six minutes twenty-seven seconds. This went six minutes fourteen. So that's just me. I felt like this was a cold match, uh, but anyway. Uh, Mims goes to whip uh, one of the guys from uh, the Brothers of Funstruction and then like he's just pulling this long sleeve out of his shirt. I like that. That makes me like the gimmick because they've got all these tricks on their, their attire that helps them get some advantage. But I think that they need to do that like two, three times in a match, not just once. I think it needs to be this master plan to use their tricks to get over on their opponents. Like you know, Sami Zayn against Johnny Knoxville. It should be like almost like ja a jackass match every time because they're clowns. Uh, one thing I did not understand, though, uh, one of the clowns, I can't remember which one, he had a balloon and he blew up a balloon and then he tried to hit, I think he tried to hit Mims with the balloon. And I don't know, I don't understand that spot. It was, it was kind of out of place. But anyway... It, what I would have done was I would have pulled out like a, a sardine or, or something that smells when you eat it. And I would have put it down, my, you know, hold it up, put it in my mouth, eaten it, and then blown up a balloon and then turn the balloon and then blow the air of the balloon into my opponent's face. Can you imagine Mims being like, oh my God, that stinks. And then he gets rolled up for a near fall. Like that, that to me is a clever spot. Not blowing up a balloon and like trying to dunk it on your, it's a balloon, bro. It's a balloon. Uh, but anyway, uh, a whoop whoop driver takes place at some stage after uh, Violent J gets involved. Um, and it was over at that point. So let's move forward. Uh, Tom Latimer comes out for an interview. That's my homie. You can check out my exclusive interview with him on the Inside of the Edge podcast on this channel. He's looking in sick shape and I'm very excited for him and Chris Adonis on night two. Let's move forward. Uh NWA Junior Heavyweight Championship. Kerry Morton, the champion. He's held up for so long. He takes on Colby Caruno with Jamie Stanley at ringside. This was the longest match on the show other than the main event. 
Oh, actually, also the uh, Burke Invitational. It went 12 minutes and 9 seconds, so actually it was the third longest match. Shit. Uh, Colby, he's become a strong worker, man. I think he's really great. And I thought to myself that Ricky was going to get involved because the last pay-per-view that the NWA put on, it seemed like that he turned heel. But on this show, it didn't really come across that way that the Mortons were still heels. This is, again, a fault of myself for not keeping up with the NWA power. I really popped for when Kerry, he had it, he had him pinned, but he went for push-ups instead. <laughs> You're not that impressive looking, bro. Like when Scott Steiner does it, that's what makes me laugh because he's just, he's a slim bloke. Uh, but Kerry, he's improving more and more every single month, dude. Uh, Colby laid out Jamie Stanley by accident, thanks to Kerry pulling him away from a dive. Uh, sweet double stomp from Colby. That was showing some real strong style in this match. It was very 50-50 back and forth. Uh, there was a kiss at goodbye knee in midair from Kerry, and then he hit it again, but he kind of, he missed it. He hit him in the shoulder. And I know Joe Galley said he hit him in the temple, but I was like, man, I rewound it. He hit him in the shoulder. Uh, crowd popped that Finley roll off the second rope by Colby. He hit a big DDT, and I couldn't believe it. I did not think he was going to win, and he's the new junior heavyweight champion. Uh, so let's move forward once again to, I guess, the low light of the show. And this is really tragic because, um, you know, I've interviewed this man, Tim Storm, on our channel. And he's such he clearly such a nice guy, really is a legend in the wrestling business. Uh, so no DQ match between Tim Storm and Jack Stain with Chris Silvio Esquire at ringside. It goes three minutes, nine seconds. As, as he was making his entrance, I thought to myself, this might be his last match. They have history. It makes sense. It's NWA 75. So uh, it's just un it's unfair that what happened happened, you know, because and I, when I look at the footage, I couldn't understand how Tim got a stinger in this. So I don't know. Velvet Sky, when Tim made his entrance, she said, you, you know who we are going for. And immediately Danny Deals goes, Jack Stain, like... <laughs> What's that going to go for him? Their broadcast colleagues, Tim. That's why I love heels. Uh, I thought to myself, it was great seeing Tim get back in there. Because, you know, I think the last time I saw him wrestle was NWA 73, our first ever solo review show for pay-per-views on this channel. Uh, he got hit with a belly-to-belly -belly to start with. And I thought to myself, man, that must be half a Tim to get over for that. Because, you know, he's hasn't been in the ring a lot recently. And um, he's a bit older. so. When he grabbed him for it, I was like, well, can he get over? He did get over the first time, but the second time he kind of went to the side because that's how I used to kind of bump a belly to belly because I'm kind of heavy um, at times when I used to wrestle. I, I feel like I'm heavy. I did my best to post, but um, when Tim was getting grabbed for the second one, I was like, I don't know if he's going to, it seems like it'd be difficult for him to get over, you know, for that, that, that flip bump. And he got flipped over and then boom, like he wasn't moving. He wasn't moving. You could see him talking to Jax. And I'm like, something's not right here, man. Uh, you could see that his body was slowly starting to stir, but he couldn't really move anything for, you know, at least 20, 30 seconds. The referee chats with Tim and then decides the match is over. Jax Day wins. I thought it was very upsetting um, because I have a feeling that Tim probably planned a really big time match here and, it was probably going to be his last outing. Uh, so hopefully he recovers okay. And then maybe he'll, you know, hop back in the gym, get himself together again, and maybe once again try to have a final match. I'm just assuming it would have been. I'm just assuming because of the occasion, because, you know, he has been in the ring very much lately because of the fact that Jack Stain was a big time, you know, foe of his in the past. Let's move forward. Matt Cardona has an interview. Like, what you expect from him. I've got no notes on it. He did great. Let's move forward. Burke Invitational Gauntlet, 15 minutes, 14 seconds. This features Kenzie Page, Taylor Rising, Ruthie J, uh, Heather Monroe, Samantha Starr, MJ Jacobs, the brother Escobar, uh, the Wode, <laughs> weird name, and Sierra. Uh, so I'm like, I didn't realize that Camille had to defend it twice over this weekend. So I'm excited that I get to see another match of hers tomorrow. Uh, oh, I just gave away the results of the main event. Who cares? You should be watching a review without watching the show. All right. 
great bridging German from Ruthie early on here. Uh, there was a Star Truck, Star Truck, Star Truck DDT from Samantha Star, who should be called Samantha Doll, that eliminated Heather. Um, I was laughing at Kyle Davis uh, in his countdowns. When he gets to one, he goes, three, two, one. <laughs> uh, Alison K enters. Everyone has to remember, Camille never actually beat her when they had a match on power for the title. They never had a rematch. I think she needs to be a challenger at some point. I think Camille needs to get that win. Uh, if she doesn't lose the belt tomorrow. Uh, MJ, um, she screwed up this springboard, right? But she made up for it because she landed it on her feet when she got over those ropes. She tr kind of tripped and kind of rolled forward, but then landed on her feet and then hit a double clothesline. Good, good save, mate. She would have been annoyed by that. It's the first thing that she did in the match. Star got eliminated. CJ was next. And I was so excited to see CJ because she makes me laugh every time. Uh, she got in there. She got a shine. But then she was posing on the apron like an idiot. And then she got eliminated. <laughs> the back elbow. She just copped it sweet. Uh, so two easy paydays for some of these girls. They came out and they got eliminated within like 20 seconds. Great stuff. Uh, there was a whirly bird by, uh, what's her name? The Wode, a whirly bird with one of her opponents on her shoulder or whatever, swinging her feet towards the opponents and they're all selling it like it was a shotgun to the head. I'm like, ah, looked a bit weak, girls. Uh, Sierra was last in and I was thinking, Kenzie or Allison are winning this. Uh, you know, well, I would put Medusa in this as well. I'm obsessed with getting her out of retirement, but come on, Medusa. Calm, Deuce. Come on, mate. You could, you could have done this. Uh, Kyle starts to count down again when we thought everyone was already out there. Max the Impaler was the surprise. The commentators sold it well. I thought maybe she almost said it. I thought they might win this one. Uh, but uh, great stuff here. Max the Impaler just starts dominating, eliminating people. But then all of a sudden, all three ladies pin her with a great dramatic moment, jumping on top, and she gets eliminated. Oh, I did it again. I'm sorry. You can see how I react every time I do it. They got eliminated uh, in this match, and it was a great moment uh, of the three ladies that were in the ring desperate to get this monster out of there. It ended up going down to the favorite, favorites, which is Kenzie and uh, Allison. Hey, uh, great drama. Kenzie is a baby face now. I can tell she's going to become world champ, I think. I have a feeling she is. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens tomorrow, but uh, let's move forward. Murdoch and Knox have an interview. Cool stuff. Whatever. I like that they kept going back to the backstage area and doing interviews. Uh, you know, I think the last Impact show I watched, there was one interview backstage. I thought, yeah, you could do more than that. Because uh, it helps thread stories through the show. It keeps you invested. Let's keep going. Matt Cardona has an open challenge. He takes on Ricky Morton here. And the match that goes 5 minutes, 26 seconds. Uh you know, I, I Matt Cardona's crew, they're all gone. The Cardona family is gone. He's on him on his own. And I just think his run with the NWO will end soon. Uh, he got good heat on the mic before the match. I like his robe. Uh he's doing great. Uh he's talking about a young rookie accepting the challenge. I was hoping like Scott Steiner would come out and accept the challenge because <laughs> imagine hearing that the, the the sirens take place and here comes Big Papa Pump all jacked up and Cardona's face would have been great, but Ricky Morton accepted this challenge. Cardona asked him to lay down. I thought Ricky, I thought Ricky turned heel at the last pay per view, so it felt like there were more baby faces here. Him and Kerry, although Kerry didn't wrestle like a heel in his match, but he made the save at the end of this. Uh, Matt asked him to lay down. He lays down. Matt's just so stupid thinking he would actually do it. That's what's so great about the character. He's so smart, but at the same time, he's such an adult. Uh, but something tells me Ricky wasn't the original idea for the opponent. I'm not sure why. I just feel like there was someone else that they may have, may have had in mind that maybe couldn't have made it. Uh, I love the spot with Ricky pretending he got eye poked by Matt because it just shows his experience and his ability to manipulate referees after all these years. Uh, Cardona made Ricky look really good in this match. Uh, he had to cheat to beat the legend with the low blow, then he hits radio silence. It was over, but good stuff there. 
Uh, let's move forward. End of their world tag team titles. We've got two to go here. La Rebellion, the champions, with Vampiro at ringside, take on Blunt Force Trauma with Aaron Stevens in a match that goes nine minutes and 16 seconds. Uh, the tag champs, Camille, doing double duty on these two nights. I believe the Junior Heavyweight Championship will be defended tomorrow as well. No Taurus doing the same, though. Hmm, interesting. Don't know why it's interesting, but it just kind of is. Uh, Blood Force Trauma with some great heat early on, and I was like, I hope the main event is next, though, because, you know, adding the pre-show, this is four hours for me. Uh, Blood Force Trauma has tactics that are working. Vampiro needs to help his team with their tactics because Aaron and his game plan is winning so far. La Rebellion, they fight back here. They hit a nice mark of the beast. I love when Aaron grabbed the ref uh, and then he got super kicked by, Van, by Vampiro. A damage hit a Harlem sidekick, which is sweet, bro. And they actually beat La Rebellion. Man, new champs. Blunt Force Trauma, you know what? They put in the hard yards over the last few months. And I think it was really cool that they won the belts. So at this stage of Roddy Mack's career, to see him be one half of the NWA World Tag Team Champions is pretty cool. Aaron Idol Stevens was very stoked. Uh, the Brothers of Fun Structure came out, though. Uh, I guess they're challenging the former champions. I'm sure that'll be on tomorrow's show or maybe the pre-show. Who knows? Uh, after this, they did a weigh-in between Tyrus and EC3. And I wrote, again, why do this? I shat on AEW when Cody Rhodes and Anthony Agogo did this because why would you do a weigh-in when weight limits don't matter? And if they're wearing clothes, you know, proper clothes, and Tyrus is wearing the bull rope around his neck. And I was like, this is pointless because you didn't even get a, an accurate reading. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't understand why EC3 was wearing a mask, dude. Like, he always does things that doesn't make sense. I don't know what it is. Like, maybe I'm just stupid. But, like, some of the angles that have taken place since he's been there, I've just been baffled by them. Like, I just feel like it's it's always this, like, this deep thought into this angle that he's coming up with or whatever it is, whatever's going on. But it, to, at the end of the day, it doesn't compute, mate. Uh, so, anyway, let's move forward to the main event of the evening here. Andrew Ray World Women's Championship. Camille, the champion, defending once again against the Hardy, Toddy, uh, 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 Natalia Markova. Match goes 15 minutes, 37 seconds. Uh, again, another no disqualification. No disqualification match. I forgot to type it in before. And then I had caps lock in the wrong spot. Uh, <laughs> uh, so... You know what? Um, Camille's the best, mate. <laughs> Debate me. I don't care. She's stolen the show consistently for the last two years, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I love at the beginning, Natalia had the kendo stick. Camille had a trash can uh, to combat that with all of the weapons in there. There was a kendo battle. The kendo stick start to disintegrate. Natalia got the advantage with the jazz stinger. I dropped her hold into the announce table by Camille. You know what, one one thought, and, and I might be wrong, Camille might have been wearing like a new push-up bra or something. And look, I'm not saying this because that's what I was worried about and I'm a horn bag, whatever. I'm just saying, it looked like Camille got new boobs. I don't know if she did or if it was just like a different bra, but it's to me, they seemed bigger. I'm sorry that that seems like an important note for me to bring up halfway through this review of this match, but it was just something that popped in my head. I was like, I feel like they're bigger. You know, it's just it's just an observation, okay? You look at people, you think things. Like, I was looking at Tom Latimer earlier. I'm heterosexual, and I was like, shit, bro, you're looking fucking great. <laughs> uh, they fight on the stage. Uh, I love that Camille goes backstage, comes back out three seconds later, suddenly has a cane in her hand. Like, what was, what was a cane back there? <laughs> I love wrestling. Uh, Natalia had a suplex on the stage, and I love that Joe screamed, Span on the pan! He clearly loves Jim Ross, man, because he's got as much passion as Jim did in the Attitude Era, especially when big spots happen or something dastardly takes place. Uh, I always think to myself, Natalia Markova must be so sore all the time because she takes some hectic bumps, man. Uh, she took a chair into the head and through this match, again, making comments on people's looks. Uh, I, 
I've, I'm finally starting to come around with the brown hair for Camille. I prefer the silver kind of looking hair though. That's just me. I don't know why. I just thought it was cool that it stood out. Uh, Camille hit her in the face with a keyboard three times, man, and hit her so hard. <laughs> uh, so there was a suicide dive attempt, but she got uh, Natalia got copped with the cookie sheet to the head. Great drama here. Uh, a drop kick onto a trash can on Camille's head. So they put a trash kit. So they, Natalia put a trash can on Camille's head, hit a drop kick off the ropes. Uh, and then, uh, sorry, I got, I got this cookie sheet to the dive um, uh, in the wrong spot there. My bad. But anyway, who gives a shit? Uh, Tornado DT off the stairs onto a folded out chair by Natalia. And I was like, man, it looks possible that she could win. Um, even though, unfortunately, when I first logged onto my laptop to watch this show tonight, uh, my Google Chrome gave me a notification because I clicked the bell on Camille's tweets and she was talking about still being the one-time champ. So <laughs> the main event was ruined for me. That's what happens when you don't watch it live, bro. But then again, why would I get up at seven in the morning here in Perth to watch a wrestling pay-per-view? I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to do it later in the day, later in the evening where I can drink some cold freaking beer. Uh, anyway, I knew I was going to have to record the review at 1.30. It's now quarter past two. I've been talking for 45 minutes. This is ridiculous. A ref bump takes place. Uh, Natalia comes off the top rope. She gets a spear in midair near fall. She reverses, uh, some stuff into a jazz stinger. Uh, then she grabbed the belt and held it up during the pin. Stupid decision by the overly excited baby face who thought she was going to win the championship. Uh, so I like that kind of bit of detail there. This was drama central, but man, they got to their ring apron. They were both battling back and forth. And then Camille got the advantage, got back in the ring and speared Natalia through the ropes, through a table on the outside that was set up previously. That was nuts. It was such a clean shot, clean bump, clean spear, because, you know, doing a bump like that is risky because you could catch your feet on the second rope as you go through. But man, what a, what a spot. I rewound it three times and watched it. Actually, I think it was four times. But what a what a what a finish to the match. Camille got the pin for victory. She retains. That's what I was hoping for. I kind of felt like Natalia was going to win this one, considering how many times that they've done battle with one another. But Camille retained. So obviously I'm happy. And I'm going to make sure when I watch night two that uh my notifications don't pop up because I don't know what the hell's going to happen with Kenzie Page and Camille come. NWA 75 night two. So there we have it. My review show here on the WCWA network. Uh, I'm going to give this an eight out of 10. Pretty much every match of the main pay-per-view was awesome. I thought the pre-show was a little bit so-so, uh, but generally most wrestling companies pre-shows are like that anyway, because if everything was going to be that great, it probably would have been on the pay-per-view in the first place. Uh, so I'm California. Thank you for joining me. Please check us out on Patreon. Uh, again, we're going to be reviewing Impact Wrestling, NWA Power, NXT. It's going to be free for the next couple of weeks on the channel, uh, but then it'll be behind a paywall. And there's uh, reaction videos to stuff too hot for YouTube. Uh, you know what I'm talking about when I say that. Uh, there's there's going to be heaps of stuff that are going to be on that Patreon, uh, and it's only $3 a month. A month. Like, how much is that a day? <laughs> you know, what, three cents? I don't know. I'm bad at math. Uh, but also check out our store on prowrestlingtees.com. Thunder Mifflin, like the office, Thunder Mifflin. There we have it. Let's get done. I'm California. We'll see you tomorrow for NWA 75, night two, AEW All In, and then probably the next day, Impact Emergence reviews here on the channel. I'll see you all down the road. Thank you. Network, that's the way we blind get puppies. Hey, network, that's the way we blind get all of us. Has been paid for by the WZWA Network.